Okay, we're going to start uh, looking at um, hyperbolas and how we shift them right and left and up and down like we do with quadratics. Um, the principles are exactly the same. Um, let's just say that my parent function was 6. Um, we'll take the 6 over x. So that's our parent function. And what we should know about that parent function is basically we have some points and um, we can have points that will make up this. So if we have x, say, is 2, then y is 3. If x is 1, then y is 6, and so on. We know all that, and we can plot that. That's all fine, okay? Now... What we want to do is take a look at what happens when we have, we know that the asymptotes at the present time are at the x and y axis. We know that these graphs approach the um, y axis but never hits it. We also know that, um, so we have here, we have the graph going towards the y axis but never going to hit it. It can't be y is 0 or x is 0. It will never hit the um, x-axis. So again, these are things that we know. We, we have an asymptote basically at the x and the y-axis are our asymptotes for this particular graph. The graph will approach them but never actually touch those. Those are our asymptotes. Now, if we shift the graph and if we move the graph around, we want to see what happens to um, to the graph. So let's just take a look and we're going to slide the graph. We have x plus an, of some value and let's say that we move this um, to 2. Now a couple of things that have happened here if we've moved it to 2 is that the graph has shifted to the left. So this point that we were at, which was at, on orange here, this point here has now shifted and is now over here. So that point has shifted to the left too. But not only has the graph itself shifted to the left too, but you'll notice that the asymptote has also shifted left too. So now the asymptote is no longer at the um, along x is 0 or along the y axis, it's now in that green area now at um, x is negative 2 or it's been shifted over by 2, okay, in that case. So x is negative 2, so that's the asymptote. All right, let's take a look at that again. Go back to 0. We shift the graph to the right or to um, positive two. A positive two is actually the opposite shift to what we um, what we see in the equation. So remember, it's always opposite, so it's going to be left two. A shift to two is left two. And if we now play this, we can see that the asymptote is going to move as the graph moves. So that a value not only tells you how the graph is going to move but A tells you where your new asymptote is going to be. So if we stop this, A is 6.1. Guess what? 6.1, negative 6.1 is where your new asymptote is. The graph has moved to the left by a value of 6.1. If we stop it here, the graph A now, the asymptote is at, is at 4.9, the opposite of what's in the graph. So it's always going to be opposite. So, make sure that you understand that A shifts the graph right or left, but it also shifts the asymptote, and when you shift it, whatever you get in the equation is always going to be opposite to what you see. So when you have a is 4, then 
basically what's happening is the graph is being shifted to the left by 4, and the asymptote is also going to be at negative 4. So we have opposites that happen here, and you have to make sure that you understand that. Now we want to see what happens when we slide and change the value of b. Um, and so we'll just move this again. We'll move it 2 to 2, positive 2. And just like in quadratics, when we move that to a positive 2, the graph moves up. So the point that used to be here is now up here. It's moved up to not the opposite, just exactly as it is, and but not only that, not only has the point moved, but so has the asymptote, right? This asymptote is now at y is 2, or the x-axis now is not at the x-axis, it's up above the x-axis by 2. So you need to make sure that you can um, identify these features and what happens to the um, asymptotes as you slide the graph. So not just does the graph slide now anymore, the asymptote also slides. So if we play this through, you can see that the graph is sliding up and sliding down, but not only that, but the asymptote is also sliding up and sliding down with the graph. So again, not only does B in the equation tell you what's happening with the graph and slides it up and down, it also, the asymptote moves along with the graph. So the B tells you what your asymptote is, what your y equals 2, 3, 4, what your y equals asymptote is. In other words, if um, normally the uh, asymptote is at the x-axis, it's either going to move above or below the x-axis. So that's a shift of the asymptote, and it's not opposite in this case, it's just as it is. And if we move A, we're moving right or left, but the asymptotes are also moving. So here we can get all of it moving at the same time, and you can see that the graphs are shifting, but also the asymptotes shift with the graphs.